Kamala Harris has a massive Pennsylvania Catholic problem. As William McGurn writes in the Wall Street Journal today, it's not just gaffes that could hurt the vice president in the Keystone State. Throughout her career as a public official, Kamala Harris has long used government power to try to coerce people of faith to violate their consciences, especially regarding abortion and gender ideology, according to Kristen Wagner, COO of Alliance, CEO of Alliance Defending Freedom, which protects religious liberty. As California's AG, she signed several friend of the court briefs opposing religious exemptions for private employers like Hobby Lobby and religious nonprofits like Little Sisters of the Poor. She said she was proud to have co-sponsored California's Reproductive Fact Act, which compelled pro-life pregnancy centers to display notices about where women could get an abortion. And then, of course, you'll recall that there was one point where she grilled a judicial nominee named Brian Busher about his membership in the Knights of Columbus, suggesting that the Knights of Columbus, which is a Catholic men's fraternal organization, is effectively some sort of KKK-like organization. She's got real problems with religious people. And that is not letting up, given the fact that you now have people like Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, doing lesbian knockoffs of communion with author and influencer Liz Plank. On Friday, the Michigan Catholic Conference, the church's lobbying arm in the state, published a statement to express profound disappointment and offense taken at the actions in the video. Now, again, these are big boo-boos that are happening from the Kamala Harris campaign over and over and over. And of course, she is now being relegated to pitching for black men, which is a very weird thing for a black candidate for higher office to have to do in the United States two and a half weeks from an election. If Kamala Harris is relegated to defending her ground with black men in the United States two and a half weeks from an election, that is bad news for her. And again, the way that she's doing that is truly paternalistic and ridiculous And if a white person did, it it would be perceived pretty obviously as racist. She's basically saying to black men, I'm going to throw money and at you. Those are her proposals. She wants $20,000 in forgivable government loans for 1 million minorities to start businesses. Virtually all of those, of course, will immediately be forgiven. And she's directing them minorities, which means that it's unconstitutional. This is not the first time that Democrats have tried to do this. In March 2021, they pushed a loan forgiveness program in the March 2021 COVID bill for socially disadvantaged farmers who are defined as those who are Black, American Indian, Hispanic, Asian, and Pacific Islander. Several judges enjoined the program. Also, she says she wants to legalize pot. So the lady who is famous for locking people up for pot in California is so famous that Tulsi Gabbard wrecked her on a debate stage over it. Now, she says she wants to legalize and help minorities get into the drug business. Very exciting stuff. Now, again, she has shifted her position pretty wildly on pot. Again, when she was AG, she was prosecuting it like nobody's business. In 2019, she said it should be legalized because it gives a lot of people joy. So the kind of joy that we should mention that Kamala Harris is about is spending your money and marijuana. Man, she th- this is not a good campaign. It just is not. Well, the fact that Donald Trump seems to have the momentum in this race is a very good thing for the world. That's particularly true in the Middle East, where Israel is still fighting an ongoing war against multiple terrorist groups. October 7th marked the one-year anniversary of the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. 1,200 Israelis were murdered. Over 250 were taken hostage. The war in Israel continues to rage on today. Missiles are flying. Tensions are high. Our allies are under attack. It seems like every time you turn on the news, there's another crisis unfolding in the region. Israel and its people are facing attacks from enemies on all sides who want its destruction. But there's hope. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is on the ground, providing food, shelter, and safety to those in need during this crisis. Since the war started, thousands of reservists, everyday Israeli citizens, have left their families to serve their country. Soldiers have been injured. Their families need our support. Their gift of $45 today helps the fellowship provide food and other necessities to these families to help them survive. Here's what I need you to do right now. Go to benforthefellowship.org. That's benforthefellowship.org to make a gift today. In the face of these many threats, the fellowship's ongoing work providing security to Israelis has never been more important. Remember, that's benforthefellowship.org. I know people on the ground who've been helped by the fellowship. Go check them out right now. Benforthefellowship.org. God bless and thank you. And so now, as we've been saying for a while, they've been forced into desperation plays. Their latest desperation play is being pushed by Matt Drudge over at Drudge Report. So Matt Drudge has basically become a stenographer and chief narrative advisor for the Democratic Party at this point. Not sure what happened to Matt. There's a point when, when Drudge Report was quite interesting. It's always very well done and well organized, but he has become a full-time cheerleader for Kamala Harris. Not, not sure what Donald Trump did to piss him off, but he's the one who's driving the Democratic narrative every day. Today, the headline over Drudge Report It's a picture of Trump, and it just says American Psycho. And it is a a link to Matt Labish's column in which he labels Trump as such. Again, the the narrative that they're trying to build now is that Trump is crazy. Okay, If you're relegated to Trump is crazy, 
You're toast. I'm sorry. That is not a dog that is going to hunt in this. Everyone who thinks Trump is crazy is already voting against him. There are zero moderates in the country who are thinking about voting for Trump who are willing to buy that Trump is just so full scale insane he can't be president. Again, so once you, we have already established a baseline of people in the United States who believe that Donald Trump under no circumstances can be president of the United States. That baseline is somewhere between 46 and 48%. That's what Kamala Harris is voting bases right now. It is all people who say that there is a barrier to entry for Donald Trump getting in and that he is he has the character that is unfit to be president of the United States. That, that argument's been made one million times. And guess what? It is not going to get Kamala Harris over the hump. If she's having to go back to arguments that appeal chiefly to people who are already voting for her, that's a real problem. So, for example, the Kamala Harris campaign tried to retail a lie that Donald Trump froze on stage the other day. They're, they're basically trying with Trump a strategy that Republicans successfully used on Joe Biden. It worked with Joe Biden because it was true of Joe Biden. And the media covered up Joe Biden's senility for three and a half years. It is not going to work with Donald Trump. So there was an attempt to turn Donald Trump into a febrile asylum escapee. Just, okay, I spent time personally with Donald Trump last week. Right? We were in New York together. He came on the show. Donald Trump is not senile like Joe Biden is senile. Donald Trump is not insane. Donald Trump is not failing mentally. This attempt to turn Donald Trump of October 16th, 2024 into Joe Biden of July, 2024 is ridiculous. Even ABC News is like, this is not, this is not gonna play. There was an attempt by the Kamala online team to say that Trump froze up during a rally. Even ABC News is like, this is not true. But then 30 minutes in, two attendees suffered medical emergencies. A doctor, please, doctor. The incidents shifted the mood, prompting Trump to cut the question short and instead play some of his favorite music. How about this? We'll play YMCA and we'll go home. Trump kept DJing and most of his supporters stayed for another 30 minutes of his play. Well, in certain quarters of social media, people had a field day with that. And I guess on the screens, it, it might have looked quite strange. Inside that hall, however, people were having a good time. What can I tell you? It, it did not seem uh, out of the ordinary. It seemed almost intimate. And at the end, Trump did something he very rarely does. He came down off the stage and mingled with his supporters. He was signing autographs and shaking hands and the like. Okay, so the left tried to play that as Donald Trump being insane. Instead, it was Donald Trump just being Donald Trump. Trump, by the way, is having a good time on the campaign trail. Kamala Harris is not. A good indicator of who's winning in a race is who's actually having fun on the campaign trail. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. <laughs>